hey guys and welcome to my youtube channel and today in this video i am going to discuss about another android interview questions and answers and as you know this video is a part of the series android interview questions and answers and for that you can find the playlist link in the description below so for today the question is launch versus async in kotlin coroutine so now it's time to discuss the answer both launch and async are the functions in Kotlin to start the coroutine. This is very important to know. Both are used to start the coroutines. Like we start the thread, right? Similarly, in Kotlin coroutine, both launch and the async are used to start the coroutines. And there is a common misconception that launch doesn't return anything. And that statement is completely wrong. Both returns something, right? So here we will learn about that. The major difference is that the launch returns a job that doesn't carry any resulting value. Whereas the async returns an instance of deferred job, which has a wait function that will help us in getting the result from that, right? So that is very important to understand. Launch returns a job, whereas the async returns an instance of deferred job. Deferred job will have the await function from where we can get the result. But in the launch where we have the job, which will not have the resulting value in that, right? That is very important to understand. So we can say that launch is all about fire and forget. Async, perform a task and return a result. So we will now take an example to learn launch versus async. So for using the launch, we can write like this. So generally what we do, we write just this one, right? So we say that launch doesn't return anything, but you can also write like this. Well, job is equal to global scope dot launch dispatchers dot default. And to be noted here, I have used global scope just for the understanding purpose. In Android programming, you will use the scope based on your requirement, correct? So as you can see, launch returns the job and this job you can use to cancel the job. So we can write job dot cancel. So that is how you can cancel the job, but this will not give you any resulting value. That is the result, right? So it will not give you that because it doesn't have the await function. So it returns the job object, which we can use to get a job status or cancel it, right? So this job object can be used to get the status of the job or to cancel the job. So in the above example of the launch, we have to do something and not return the result back, right? So we are not concerned about any result, right? We are just interested in the completion of the task, not in the result of the task. So for example, if you want to move some file from one location to another location, so we are just concerned about that, whether the file has moved successfully from one location to another location or not. But we are not concerned about any result from that, right? For those types of tasks, we can use the launch where we are not concerned about the result, right? Now, when we need the result back, we need to use the async. So as I already said that async returns the deferred job, right? So here you can see that it is returning the deferred job. And on that deferred job, you can apply dot await. And from there, we can get the resulting value, which is the result, right? So here we can use the await. So in async also, we can use the deferred job object to get the job status or to cancel it. So the difference between the deferred job and the job is that on the deferred job, we can apply the await. And through that, we can get the result. But that is not the case with the job. Otherwise, both the job job and the deferred job can be used to get the status or cancel the job get the status or cancel the job so that is how the deferred job is different from the job and we get the deferred job in case of async and we get the normal job in case of the launch right so that is the case with the launch and the async as i already said that global scope i have used here for quick examples we should avoid using it at all the cost and in an Android project, we should use the custom scope based on our use case, such as the lifecycle scope, view model scope and etc. So till now, what we have learned, launch is used to fire and forget and async is used to perform a task and get the result from that, right? But 
very important again launch doesn't return anything is a completely wrong statement both returns the job in which one we have the job and in the another one we have the deferred job right so till now we have learned the difference between the launch and the async in terms of the job but there is another difference between the launch and the async in terms of the exception handling so that is also we are going to learn now so in case of launch if any exception comes inside the launch block it crashes the application if we haven't handled it very important if we haven't handled it it will crash the application so however if any exception comes in async block it is stored inside the resulting deferred and is not delivered anywhere else it will get silently dropped unless we handle it so if we get any exception inside the async block it will be stored inside the resulting deferred object and it will not be delivered anywhere else so it will silently drop unless we handle it so now let's understand this with the code example again suppose we have a function that does something and throw an exception so this is that function it does something and it throws an exception now when we use the launch it will simply crash the application when we run it right but we can handle it like this so when we handle by using the try catch we can get the opportunity to handle the exception here now the exception will come inside the catch block so that is how we can catch it now using the async when we use the async and run it the application will not crash the exception will get dropped silently as the exception is getting dropped silently we will not be able to know what is the error right so to catch that we will have to write again try catch and this is how again we get the opportunity to handle the exception now the exception will come inside the catch block and we can again handle it so now let's conclude it launch fire and forget async perform a task and return a result launch returns a job and doesn't carry any resulting value right async returns an instance of deferred job which has a wait function that returns the result of the coroutine and finally if any exception comes inside the launch block it crashes the application if we haven't handled it if any exception comes inside the async block it is stored inside the resulting deferred job and is not is not delivered anywhere else and is not delivered anywhere else and it will get silently dropped unless we handle it so that is the difference between the launch and the async so now we know the answer to the launch versus async in kotlin coroutine so that's it for now please like share comment and subscribe to my youtube channel and if you want me to create more videos on some specific questions so please let me know in the comment section i'll be happy to do it have a great learning ahead and see you in the next video